Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to English Poetry. We have a very interesting uh, poet, a very interesting poem today. Uh, we agree that this is an English poetry course, so we're sticking with English poetry, but we're adding some Palestinian and Israeli uh, poetry. But this one here, probably the last poem in the English, originally written in English poems, is an American poet. His name is E. E. Uh, Cummings. If you see, sometimes his name is written all in uh, small letters, no capital letters. Now, this is the poem we're going to study. Probably the shortest, smallest, tiniest poem of all times. I want you to take one minute and try to imagine what the poem is saying to you, what the poem is communicating to you. The poem is also page 139. Okay. So do you think do you think the poem is different in any way? Eh? Can't even read it. La La Uh-huh. So okay there is a leaf falls Online? <laughs> On? Okay. There's, okay, thank you. So there's L, one L, in it. So that's loneliness, a leaf falls. Or a leaf falls, loneliness. But some of you think that it's online or I don't know. Anything else you can see in this poem? And it is a poem. 20th century experimental modernist poem by one of the most innovative poets of all time, E. E. Cummings. Can you, if you look at, if you look closely, I, okay, also again, I don't know how, they, like is this a line? Is this a line? Are these all lines or how should we read it? Is this a stanza? And then this is a stanza, and this is a stanza. So what else can you see? What does anything communicate with you? Please. It's kind of like a leaf falling. Okay, very good. So if this is, you said, a leaf falls, then there is this leaf thing falling. Hopefully not going to fill. Okay. So what, what is that? What does that mean? What does that mean? When the poem, the, the, shape, the, form, is the form is is connected, is connected only connected. <laughs> the form is the meaning, basically. It's not just connected like with John Dunn. It's probably closer to what George Herbert was doing, where the form is the meaning. So yeah, the, the poem itself draws the physical shape of a single leaf falling down. A visualization, we call this concrete or visual poetry. Some of the most experimental poetry started, pioneered by George Herbert himself, and then became very famous. This man is crazy, like, you just Google his name, you'll find so many beautiful uh, poems uh, he writes in a way similar to this. Please. Why didn't he put between two That's a question. So what do you think? Do you think it has something? What is it about? Like, what do you think it is about? It's, it's about endings, about how life ends, ending of lives, because symbolically, a leaf falling could be something marking what? The ending of what? Of life? Of so this is about death, because falling, fall, could symbolize death. Thank you very much. So this is... 
Okay, but again, like there's loneliness here, but loneliness is also separated itself. So there is the theme of death, of endings, the theme of loneliness, and also the theme of separation and isolation, being scattered, fragmentation, detachment from what? What else can you see? Look closely, please. This might be overstretching, but if this represents life, then probably like uh, the L before the uh, brackets above, it represents you when you are born and you are just like alone. You, don't, you cannot communicate with people. So because this, also, this is one L, but it also looks like one. There's actually an argument. Is this L or is this I one? I thought they were like uh, Greek numbers at first, like one and two. But and then, like the two L's in the like middle, one. Okay, so you're connecting this. One. There's one separation, yeah. singularity, and then duality, and then what? What could that possibly indicate? I thought that this. Okay, I thought that this represents your company in life, and then you, at the end you end up dying alone. You're born alone. You make society. You die. That's really cool. Please. to show that you end as you began. You end as you began? Or could that also indicate that separation, being far away from whatever society, family, is what creates loneliness? Mm -hmm. Can you be alone in the midst of society? Yes, yeah. Because in the middle of the world, there is something taking place. So even, even a leaf falls, the leaf itself falling is separated with the brackets. The, bra the brackets here poetically function as something, as some kind of building a wall. That's why probably creating loneliness. What else? Please. Okay. How many things indicate singularity? One. One. Okay. Ah. Uh, the fact that this is a leaf. False. This is singular, also grammatically speaking. Uh, and then there's one. Look at this one. And then there is this also another one. There's a lot of one. Or is this duality? Do we have duality? Two things. I think the brackets, two brackets, and also two L's here. Probably this functions some kind of opposite things. Do you know French? Does anybody know French? Okay. The L E is like that. What about this? Who knows French? A little bit of French. So both of them can be read as French words. One for masculine. This is this is. Who knows French? Okay, so tell us a little bit. This one is female, and this one is male. Both of them mean that. Both singular. And also, I find this also, like, you know the yin-yang, yes. the Chinese thing? I don't know how to draw it. I'll give it a shot. Okay, I don't know. So this is something like AF and then FA. So there is a lot of duality here. Binary is, is it taken as binary, as opposites, or going together? Because eventually, no matter what, we take what we talk about, what we have in mind, it, it's going to end up one. Alone, alone, all, all alone. Like what's his name, Coleridge said. Maybe he's, try, he's trying to indicate that this is life. Mm -hmm. I, I really told you that the, you, you, you end as you become. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he's trying to indicate that this is life. Mm -hmm. You end as you become. We start babies, we cannot talk, we cannot work, we mm -hmm. have no teeth, and we end up the same. So this, is a whole, this whole thing is a metaphor of life. Yes, he's trying to tell you that we are having opposite cases for the same thing. 
Okay, that's very interesting. Also, the sounds themselves, such as the fast sound, the repetition, the alif, or maybe indicates the time versus quickly. So, also the kind of alliteration, the sound here, probably there's wind blowing. So yeah, I find this also to be interesting. Is is this illness? Illness, illness. Not sure if this means anything. But also, illness could be like oneness. This is one. If you take this letter L as also a number, a digit, like being one, oneness. In many ways, it's one. Please. Not necessarily. You'll find some leaves, but yeah, generally they kind of move and swing. But if you look, the whole poem is also like one, right? Number one. A shape. It's just standing alone. Does this? I don't know. I, I find this very, int very intriguing. Like it's just like how many words? Four words. But look at how many things it is saying. <coughs> how many meanings, how many you know, feelings the poem is, is invoking. Now, this is modernist poetry. It doesn't have to be long sometimes. It doesn't have to be go on and on and on for pages and pages. It's, it's just one tiny poem, but with so many meanings. And this is what experimentation and modernity you know, are giving us. And just playing with words, playing with the shape. This is something Samuel Johnson would be not hanging people for, or Johnson. He'll be massacring people for doing this. I'm sure he's spinning in his grave now. And that's why I'll give you an assignment, so just to tease him even more, make him rot more in hell. Yeah? So, whatever you take this poem about, uh, this poem is haunting. I, I think I came. Uh, yeah, like I encountered this poem almost 20 years ago and it still haunts me. I still think of it sometimes. Is this, I'm, again, I, I'm not sure what it means. It could mean many things. I don't claim that there, remember, we, we, do, we do say this all the time. There's no one single correct valid mean. The, mean, the more you can support uh, your argument, your idea with the text, the more valid it is. So it's, it depends on how well it is supported from the text with textual evidence, with logical uh, argumentation. Is he indicating, again, that that's life, it's going to end no matter what, or if we are separated, we're going to, to die alone. If we don't stick together, we die alone. I also find something, not sure if I'm stretching it and how much of that I'm doing. The F, F, and the A, A here, in a way, kind of possibly form, what's that? No, I said that. Said what? Yeah. Forming a cross. Yeah. Did she say this? No. Okay. So what I'm saying is that, again, this could be just crazy imagining. I'm stretching this. Because, they're what's that? They are having a concept in Christianity that uh, we are all on a leaf which uh, starts from the last sky to the first sky and mm. people when they die, the leaves fall. Yeah. Maybe Everybody maybe has a leaf have somewhere have and then we, we die. die. But is this, like, as long, is this a, I, again, I hate to put politics and religion in poetry because they limit, but I don't want to take this like the, literally as a Christian concept, but just, is this faith, is this just a cross that symbolizes faith? The more we stick to faith, the more together we, we become, we come, we draw. I'm not sure, probably I'm just... I'm not sure. Possibly this is written on a leaf of a, a book. And in this say, because I read somebody somewhere, you are saying, or she, I don't, I don't know, uh, that this could also be, because the leaf, uh, basically, yeah, death, autumn, right, fall. But also what 
comes next is life. So this is also a renewal. If you want to connect this with a leaf of a book, like, like you reading a book, I think this is too much, but it, it's valid. You're coming to the end of the book, and that's how it falls, and then you turn rather than fall. Anyway, I'll let you think of this, and how beautiful it is, this kind of concrete poetry, visual poetry. I, I also want you to, to do something like this, experiment on words. There's an English poet, I keep forgetting his name, but I'm following him on, on Twitter, who became famous because he writes this kind of poetry. I'll post his uh, account and some of his uh, poetry, so you can see that poetry nowadays doesn't have to stick to the ancient classical uh, uh, rules of decorum. I know some of you would never consider this as poetry, but what is poetry? We'll see you next class. Uh, I mean, in the coming classes, because we're coming to the end of the course. Okay, anyway, I'll stop here, but I want to show you something called, I already posted this on the Facebook group we have for the course, uh, Blackout Poetry. So is this, how, how are you supposed to read it? Loneliness, a leaf falls, a leaf falls, loneliness, or should it be, or are we damaging it, doing it this way? So, uh, Blackout Poetry, concept, uh, Ms. Hanan probably introduced you to this. Uh, some of you attended a training session during the poetry fair and festival. I chose three beautiful uh, uh, blackout uh, poems, so to speak. Uh, I think Rahaf has one. So you take a book, any book that you don't want, you want, you hate, you just want to throw out, or you just take a picture of any page and you know just do uh, all the blacking out on your mobile. You don't have to destroy a box. It's not good destroying box. Okay. My assignment to you is to take our poetry book, only our poetry book. So I want to make sure that this is yours. And you don't have to stick to the poems. Most of you were just looking at the poems. Look here. Somewhere you'll have more words in the introduction. And more, the more words, the better. The more means. But try number one to be uh, uh, poetic, and number two try to say something different. So if you go and black out, shall I convert thee to a summer's day? And then you black out. Uh, so long as men can breathe, or eyes can see. So long as this and this gives life to you. That's not good, because this is what Shakespeare is basically saying. And try to be grammatically correct. I'll allow. On certain occasions, just fragments, if the fragment is part of the meaning. We've seen how Master uh, Kurt, he did, right? We'll see, because a fragment, uh, uh, a fragment in a poem could be very indicative of something, lack of connection of uh, something. So this is, uh, this is Ahmed Sheikh Khalil. It's beautiful, I love it. In the middle of a night. The trick is, look at the words. Circle the words you find interesting. Try to make a sentence, subject, verb, and pay attention to the subject, verb agreement, okay? And unless breaking the rules is part of what you have in mind, which all of you will say that, okay, yeah. In the middle of a night, daylight was born. I loved this. And then when I saw the word naked at the end, I just was pulling the remaining, the two remaining hairs in my head. This is beautiful. Because it's just double, it's not just a light, light was born. It's a metaphor inside a metaphor. It's layers of metaphors, very, very beautiful. I love this. And is this yours, Rahaf? I also find this fascinating. Bouncing high, I don't know what high means here. I hoped then the sun was gone and rose to take its place. Night with, with poisoned arrows. So whether this is a full sentence, it's still a fragment, or whether we have a comma. Night with poisoned arrows. And rose to take its place, night. And ro so night, yeah. oh, there's, wow. I love this even more now. 
Okay, just one hair is remaining. <laughs> and finally, just I'll, I'll, I'll show some of the examples you wrote, some of you and other students from the other, the other uh, groups. Many flowers are born invisible. That's Amal Suckers, I think. It's yeah. also beautiful. So basically, these are not your words, but they are also your words. And you can begin this, whatever you have here, to write your, your, a whole poem, a longer poem, or even a book, or a novel, or a short story. Give it a try when, you have, uh, when you're done with your exams. This is one way to generate ideas, to create ideas. Uh, not sure, I wanted to, I think this is one of the boys. Awesome. Live life like birds of God. Live life like birds of God. Fine. This is not blackout, this is yellow out, but I don't know. In the sky we lie, in the fields we die. That's beautiful also. Who's that? Shayma, okay. That's really a, a fine piece of writing. In the sky, look at the eye, eye, eye. That's very poetic. The sky we lie in fields. We die. Again, I don't know, is this the lie that is a pun on both meanings, or we just Lying. not telling the truth, or just being there? My heart still appears in the sky till the light fades away. That's also nice. My heart still appears in the sky till the light fades away. Who's this? Okay, what's your name? Now that's a very fine thing to say if you just turn your mobile phone off. In Gaza, death sentences. Death sentences sleep. Look at the metaphor here. How death sentences being people that sleep or wild animals. Sleep stuffed in our throat, hovering and blocking a dear one's life. Who's this? That's Reams. Okay, I like it. In Gaza, death sentences sleep stuffed in our throats, hovering and blocking a dear one's life. I love this. Uh, come my life. I also find this very interesting. Come my life. My love. I need thee, for thou art wiser than I. I, th I think this is... I love this is the perfect blacking out. Who's, who did this? This is the perfect blacking out. All of you, I'm sure, I'm sure you can be poets, but I'm not sure you, if you can be artists and painters. I find this also very paradoxical and very brief. I am nobody to be somebody. Uh, uh, it's very paradoxical in many ways, very interesting, very brief, very sharp. I'm nobody to be somebody. Basically it's saying something in the poem, but in other words. You don't have to stick to the things I, I, I wrote myself so you look cool. And another day in Palestine, as we sleep, we dream and pray to live. I like this, simple, but it's also saying basically what the poem says. So try to avoid this, but it's really good. The world is ours. The sea, the moon, the winds, and the flowers. I like this. Punctuation-wise, I probably like commented on this punctuation-wise. The sea is ours. I don't know. The world is ours. Colon or something. I don't care. The sea, the moon, the winds, and the flowers. Ours, flowers. Not the music. Not that I like crime and consider it a priority. This is whiting out. <laughs> Let my soul reach the level of passion and faith I lost. Also, beautiful. Okay, yours? Good, you should be proud. Let my soul reach the level of passion and faith I lost. That I lost. This is, I don't know what color this is. Purple? Is this purple? Earth was made to end. That's very dark. And Zaina, okay. It's like it's like a leaf falls loneliness. If this is written in a particular way, 
hundreds of years from now, people will be saying, wow. What's that? Say again. That time, that time of day after sunset in the back, in the black night, death must leave. And the theme of the picture goes with this. It's so dark. The picture itself. Is so dark. The picture itself? What do you mean? Probably there was no electricity. Yeah, possibly. Black night. In the black night, death must leave. I like, I like this. It's like a John Donne thing to say. Death thou shalt die. Death thou shalt leave. But John Donne, nobody surpasses the big boy. This is the poem we, do, we did just now before the class. On a roof in the sky at the other end, I can't see because we have put up many flags. I love this. Is it about nationalists? If you go to America, for example, like American flags everywhere, everywhere. Like too many flags that people have been blinded with nationalism. America first, whatever country first. And, what, and all the bigotry sometimes this nationalism could, could hide beneath. So I can't see because we, it's not blaming anybody else, we have put up many flags. Wow. Who's this? Not this class? Small windows buried with the dew drawing dreams, dew drawing dreams, look at the alliteration here, dreams forever and ever. This poem is missing a verb, but I find it contributing, the missing verb, the fragment contributing this to whatever there is. Small windows should be are buried, right? I'm not sure if there is a verb here uh, that she can dig out and black. Small windows buried with the dew, like, like are the windows buried by the dew, whatever that means. But look at this beautiful image, drawing dreams. Sometimes dew draws dreams. Look at the window sometimes, you know, early in the morning at dawn and you will be finding, not sure if, some, if you've ever done this as a child, following how the dew drops could be drawing something. I love the sounds of Dudes, this G, G, G. We're almost done. The sun is black. I have seen no roses. Wow, that's very dark. The sun. Look at this. The poem, Sonnet 130, is saying totally different thing, but you made up your own. Beautiful. Is this anybody's poem here? What's your name? Manal. Manal, I love this. But please don't be this dark. <laughs> the sun is black. I have seen no roses. Wow. That's a foreign earth breathing no peace under heaven. Nice. I look at the, again the metaphor. How I'm not sure if is this about diaspora living in exile far away from your country and then the foreign country you live in breathing no peace, giving inspiring no peace under heaven. And that's it. I'll stop here. Again, you still have the chance to do something. Please post only one. Please use my, uh, our book, our poetry book. And also, I said minimum six words and maximum 20 words. If you want to experiment on language in a way like E.E. Uh, e. Cummings, you're welcome. Thank you. If you have questions, please stay behind. <laughs>